So here is the next turn. Uh, you can see what, uh, actually, this is a couple of turns into it. I, I was not very diligent in taking photos. Uh, I'll explain what happened. The chariot in the far background had charged the scorpion and killed it, and then overran uh, into the middle of the picture, but then the, the, the foreground chariots charged it. So the chariots uh, fled, instead of being charged by my chariots, and actually fled through his arch unit. And uh, what we didn't realize uh, until that happened was that the rules say, if your chariot flees through your own units, you take impact hits. So that actually wiped out five of his archers just from doing that. Uh, and I've brought the carrion back around from, from off the table. They're ready to, to get stuck into the action. Uh, and the the chariots have charged the unit of, uh, of Swordmasters of Hoeth with the Archmage unit. Very crucial. Now, uh, as everybody knows, elves always strike first, and Swordmasters of Hoeth have weapon skill 6, strength 2, sorry, sorry two attack strength 6. Uh, sorry, strength 5 uh, with the great swords taken into account. Uh, he tried to ca cast um, Force on Making on my chariot of 5, but didn't succeed. Uh, because he didn't get a double, very unfortunate, and I think I scrolled it. So the chariots come rumbling in, I get about 10 impact hits, wipe out all of the swordmasters, the prince uh, bashes the archmage over over the head with a flail, and that's dealt with his, his uber unit of dudes with the uh, shield of Safari, and kills the archmage, and I've also uh, managed to wipe out his... Uh, the carrion then charged the... Uh, the uh, uh, other mage in the arch unit and kill him. Now, on, in the photo... The mage is on the other side of the unit opposite the carrion, but the only reason he's there is because uh, if we'd placed him on the other side, he would have been halfway across the hill and the model kept falling over. So just to represent the fact that he was with the unit, we put him on the other side, but in actual fact, the, uh, the, the other mage on the hill is meant to be um, in base-to-base -base contact with the carrion. So just thought I'd explain that. Uh, so this pretty much uh, puts me well ahead in the game. I'm doing very well here, but uh, unfortunately my chariots are now going to be charged on the flank by silver helms. Let's go to the next photo. The Tomb Guard are moving forward, getting ready to be uh, charged by the Dragon Princess and the Chariot, but I get the magic phase off, and uh, they move forward, and then they get urgency by the, the, the Casket of Souls um, Lich Priest on the hill and, uh, and charge him. By the way, the Casket of Souls did go off this game, but uh, luckily he had, he had kept most of his key units uh, facing in a direction where they wouldn't get it and get hurt. Let's look. Let's go to the next picture. The uh, the shadow warriors are continually continually moving around here. They they keep marching. They're not. They haven't fired a single shot yet. And the uh, I keep reforming the skeleton warriors uh, to face against the shadow warriors to prevent them from doing too much damage. Next photo. Now I've skipped a lot of of, of pictures here, but uh, here's something really really bad happened. I um I noticed at the end of my magic phase that. His chariot was facing my Casket of Souls, and I had joined the Casket of Souls crew with the Hierophant as well as the other Lich. And I thought, that, that chariot's in range to charge me, and if he charges me, he can just pick on the Hierophant and kill it. So I used the Hieratic Jar to move the Hierophant into this unit, and I knew that he had charged me with, with Shadow Hunters, as he's doing here. Shadow Warriors, as he's doing here. And I thought, okay, so that's three models, three plus to hit, he's likely to get two hits, and he's more likely to get only a single wound on the, on the Hierophant, so if I'm really lucky, he'll survive and I'll break him with Combat Res. Of course, what happened is they charged, they got two wounds, killed them. So I lost the Hierophant, and things then looking very bad for me, and just totally hitting myself because that chariot wasn't actually in range to charge the Cadet Cask of Souls in the first place. So that was a, a serious, serious mistake that you never make as a Warhammer player, especially as a Tomb Kings player. And I was hitting myself because it brought him back into the game. Even after I wiped out both of us Uber Mages, I lost my Hierophant at the stage, so I had to take a test for everything in the army, and my Skeleton Warriors just across the board started crumbling. Everything else tended to not really take much damage, but the Skeleton Warriors in particular uh, were fine. The, the, the Catapult crew got taken out by the, the crumbling as well. So that sucked. Now, uh, in the meantime, the Tomb King has, has moved over here with uh, Cloak of the Jones in order to use his urgency to uh, attack the, the Silver Helms in the back. Of course, he didn't get his magic off, so he's stranded there. And he got shot by a repeater bolt throw with six shots. Now, I knew that he'd need four pluses to hit me, so I assumed three to, three, for him to get three hits, and he needed fives to wound, so I assumed him to get one wound total. Of course, he rolls number of fives and sixes and kills the Lord outright. Very lucky, very unlucky for me, and uh, having the Lord just sitting there, uh, sitting duck, shot by a repeater bolt thrower, uh, suddenly puts him back into the game, because I've got no Tomb King, no Hierophant. I've got my Prince and my, my Lich Priest on the, on the Cusk of Souls left, and he's uh, got no mages, but he's got his battle standard bearer with the banner of battle in this Dragon Prince unit. So my Tomb Guard charge him, issue a challenge with my champion. His Drake Master swings back at me, uh, well, before that I, before I do no wounds. 
my tomb tomb champion, my tomb guard champion attacks back, kills him. So that was fortunate. Kills the uh, the standard bearer, and uh, did very well for the rest of the guys. Didn't take too much damage. He rolled a two for his battle banner. The combat was drawn, so his musician meant that I lost another model. But I've got banner of undying legion in that unit, so that was very good. So let's move to the next picture. Um, on the far side here, you can see the uh, chariots mopping up the, uh, the 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 unit of swordmasters of Hoeth and the uh, the other chari the, the chariots that run away. So really, uh, this picture is not actually new. It's just another picture of something I've already talked about. So I'm just going to go straight to the next one. Um, the yeah, the chariots here next to the tomb king. Yeah, this is just another superfluous picture. I'm just going to skip straight to the next one uh, where we can see something new. So I've actually uh, forgotten to take a whole bunch of photos here. We've got the light streaming in through the windows. Just think of that as the light of death from the Casket of Souls across the battlefield. Now, um, incredibly, the Tomb Guard beat the Dragon Princes in combat because the Battle Standard Bearer only rolled a 1 for his battle banner. Very unlucky. I managed to beat him. Of course, I caused fear, automatically flee. He didn't roll a double 1 for his thing. And uh, the Tomb Guard pursued, uh, pursued them off the table. Uh, in the meantime, I've lost all of my, uh, my, my skeletons from, from the, the, the Hierophant Crumbling as well as the Catapult. Uh, all of the other archers, everything else is dead. The Hierophant got charged by the Chariot in the end, but uh, the Chariot didn't take him out. Color of Shapeish helped me out a bit. Uh, oh no, it did, didn't, didn't say the wolf, but he didn't get enough impact hits. And then the Casket Guards crushed the, the, cha the Chariot. And the Chariot had already taken a lot of wounds from the Casket Attacks itself and uh, and archers. So took out his, his, his Chariot there. And uh, the light <laughs> from the window prevents you from seeing the archers and the scorpion and, and stuff over in the background. But that's what's going on over there. So a better picture shows you three archers left in the hill and archers reforming in the forest. The reason why they reformed there is because the, the, the scorpion came back on the board after chasing somebody away and uh, threatened to charge them. So I forced him to move back and had the, the tomb guard uh, reform in the background so I could charge him. But he's just reformed so he's out of, out of torch line of sight from everybody and that will take him to the end of the game. Silverhelms uh, charged the... This, the into the, uh, the the prince's unit, but the prince just battled them to the death, and the game ended uh, at turn, turn six. Just show you this next picture where you got the close up of these guys. The game ended here pretty much, and uh, it was just two guys versus two guys, and uh, one wound left on the chariot. So uh, that was the end, and it was a real bloodbath of a game. Casket uh, Soul survived, so did the Prince, and that was the, my, my most expensive stuff, and the, the Tomb Guard are completely alive thanks to Undying Legion reviving everybody. So my opponent, without bothering to add up the points, just uh, called it a minor victory for the Tomb Kings, which I was happy to settle for. And uh, by the way, I'd, I'd captured both of his banners from his Dragon Princes, so that really went well, and... And man, um, I really felt like I outplayed him in the first half of the game and then made some stupid mistakes. Shouldn't have moved the king like that. Shouldn't have moved the hierophant like that. And had I not done that, I, it would have been a crushing victory to the undead. But it turned out to be a minor victory thanks to me being stupid uh, halfway through, just uh, cracking under the pressure. But still, uh, Tomb Kings did very well today. Two, two victories. One extreme upset of a victory and then one uh, minor victory much better game the second game that's how it should have gone my opponent still was very unlucky with his Arch archmage magic he could have done a lot better with that and i think he deployed the the sword masters of Hoeth very poorly uh and many maybe made a couple of bad maneuvers uh, towards the middle but he didn't do too badly and uh, other than that it was just a, a great game so thanks for watching guys hope you enjoyed this hopefully i'll have some more for you during the week